A Michigan man is victorious in a case involving the federal government and his medical marijuana, so long as he provides his paperwork within 30 days. Here's WOOD-TV with the story. Dan Banach and U.S. attorneys continued their discussion about marijuana laws outside the federal courthouse. Have a great day. The feds agreeing to dismiss misdemeanor possession charges once his attorney obtains his original application from the state. Banach was arrested while smoking outside a tribal casino in Leelanau County back in January. Three marijuana cigarettes were also confiscated. Banach told tribal officers he had applied for his state medical marijuana ID card back in October but had yet to receive it. The casino falls under federal jurisdiction and federal laws make marijuana use illegal. But U.S. attorneys tell 24-Hour News 8 that they will follow state guidelines when it comes to prosecution. At issue is the fact that state law allows you to medicate while waiting on your ID card if you have a copy of your application on you. Binek did not. They wanted me to have a permit on me, and I should have had a permit on me, so that was my fault. In a recent 24-hour News 8 investigation, the head of the Michigan Medical Marijuana Program admitted the state is three months behind in processing applications. My staff is working very, very hard, very diligently to try and get these cards out and processed as quickly as we can. Benek's attorney says cases like this are just the beginning of legal entanglements and unnecessary arrests as patients, law enforcement, and the judicial system gets familiar with Michigan medical marijuana laws. I mean, there's nuances for police when it comes to searches and seizures. You don't have just the users. Now you have the, the people that grow it for people who are providers. It's about taxpayers' dollars and uh, federal dollars going into court, and unfortunately this should have never happened. In the past 10 months, more than 16,000 people have applied for their medical marijuana cards. Nearly half of them are still waiting. Live in downtown Grand Rapids, Mark Thompson, 24-Hour News 8. Grand Rapids City Commission is trying to limit growers to five patients and revoke the growers' Fourth Amendment rights in order to be allowed to provide the plant to the state's sick and dying. WZZM has this. I ask you to stop wasting our time and the county's tax dollars on this plan. This is just not a good plan. Patients permitted to use marijuana and growers registered to provide it are against regulations moving toward approval in Grand Rapids. You cannot do what you're going to do. What if it was your wife dying? How would you feel if they had cancer and they were throwing up? The Grand Rapids Ordinance would classify growers as home businesses permitted under state law to provide marijuana for five patients, plus themselves if they qualify, and then with some additional city regulations added on. How much time and effort went into um, this process? It wasn't just a thing that we just decided last week. There are two major concerns we have your ordinance. Opponents to the city's proposed ordinance say it should not require growers to get a business license. They are not businesses. You're trying to interfere with a non-commercial relationship between patients and caregivers. And they strongly object to warrantless search at any time by police, fire, or building inspectors. We have concern about the electrical demands uh, with older wiring in homes and the, the huge power draw by heat lamps and the type of equipment necessary to grow this plant. I think it's a valid public safety concern. This ordinance basically gives uh, them the right to enter someone's home without advance notice. The police. These will be challenged. We do have firm commitments from attorneys that will represent anyone that is cited under your ordinance. I am comfortable that the proposed ordinance is in full compliance with state law. One director of the Medical Marijuana Association thinks caregivers and compassion clubs should be left alone to regulate themselves. They'll intervene if someone is violating state law. The Grand Rapids City Commission plans a final debate on the proposed ordinance March 9th. Montana law enforcement are facing what seem to be non-issues when it comes to their jurisdiction. Nonetheless, they feel like they are issues. Here's KTVQ with more. Since the use of medical marijuana in Montana was approved in 2004, law enforcement agencies have faced a bit of a struggle. We are in a quandary uh, because we have conflict between state law and federal law. Here's where the issue lies. In February of 2009, the United States Attorney General announced that federal authorities would no longer be actively pressing charges against any marijuana dispensaries, which is just one of the obstacles affecting agencies at the local level. It is a violation of federal law to possess marijuana, uh, even for municipal purposes. So on one hand, we have the federal law, which states it's illegal. We have the uh, United States Attorney General saying we're not going to do anything with it. 
and now we have it enacted by uh, by vote and uh, into law for us to deal with. From December 2005 to December 2009, the number of patients and caregivers in Montana went from hundreds to thousands, which raises the question of how well medical marijuana is being regulated. To me, it looks like that there's very little regulation on, uh, on that end of it. That's not our job. Uh, we enforce the law. We're not a regulatory agency. So work needs to be done on that particular side of it. Which forces local departments to walk a fine line. Regardless of philosophies and theories or whatnot, we're caught in the middle of um, a, a drug that has been deemed legal by the state, illegal by the, by the federal agencies, and no guidance on what we can and can't enforce, especially with possession. Uh, so, you know, that's very difficult and rest assured that we are moving very carefully when we get into those situations because we don't want to get into, into anything that's going to violate somebody's rights or violate state law. New York is one step closer to legalizing medical marijuana now that the Health Committee passed the Senate bill this week. Here's WNYT with more on a local group's effort to shed some light on this important issue. It's, um it's truly a hassle just to get through life, being in pain constantly. They don't match the image of movie stoners. These advocates for legal medical use of marijuana say they speak from painful experience. I found out uh, two and a half years ago that I have MS. Uh, it made me blind. It's the worst feeling you can have. I checked different things, and the main thing that worked without harming my body or other people was marijuana. There are bills pending in both houses of the New York legislature which would allow possession and use of two and a half ounces of pot. There are various other provisions in the bills. Fourteen states allow similar use. A dozen others are considering it. It's not clear whether New York's bill is close to passage. By now, the positions are well established. Advocates argue it's a natural substance which can be effective and less harmful than other drugs legally obtained. Opponents consider pot a gateway to other drugs and point to states where storefront dispensaries suggest legal restrictions are often flaunted. I can't name names at this point, but it seems that some of the opposition uh, is softening. New York Patients First points to a recent statewide poll finding that medical marijuana was a good idea. 71% in favor, 25% opposed. Bill Lambden, News Channel 13. HempCon 2010 was a huge success this last weekend in Los Angeles. Legalization, medical marijuana, and hemp awareness were all part of the focus at this year's convention. Here's Fox LA with more. Welcome to HempCon 2010, where organizers hope to promote the value of hemp and shed a positive light on the medical marijuana community. Cannabis consumers, we want to comply with the law. We are law-abiding citizens, but you have to give us something to work with. Give us clear issues so we can follow the law. That seems to be the key issue where some attendees are concerned about current plans to restrict medical marijuana dispensaries. We're here as a collective and just, you know, trying to get some laws passed and uh, we'll see where it goes. Or grows, possibly inside this specially equipped hydroponic trailer. Well, this is conducive for a qualified medical patient, although it's meant for fruits, vegetables, and everything else in the world. Yeah. Hemp has many uses, and you'll find many of them right here, from soaps, oils, lotions, and wallets. That's the strongest natural fabric on the planet. And some say perhaps the most misunderstood. People look at things and they stereotype them and they assume that just because it's a marijuana or that it could be negative and harmful, but they'll be surprised how much it can be good for you. And the HempCon runs uh, through the weekend here for the 18 and over crowd here at the Convention Center's West Hall. Reporting live from downtown Los Angeles, I'm Al Naipo, Fox 11 News. This has been the Reefer Report for February 24, 2010. Don't forget to check out the new Reefer Report website at reeferreport.com. I added a forum, comment section, and calendar, so post your questions, comments, and events today. Thanks for watching.